Welcome to The Careful Diver. My name is Juji Carminati and today's topic is CNS toxicity or central nervous system toxicity. Let's talk about it. CNS toxicity refers to central nervous system toxicity and it specifically refers to the toxicity caused by oxygen. That's right, oxygen you need it to live and it can also kill you. That's just the balance of life. So CNS toxicity can result by uh, from short to medium exposure to high PO2 above atmospheric pressure. Break it down. Atmospheric pressure is a pressure of one. That is most likely what you are experiencing unless you're watching this underwater, which would be super cool but weird. Other than that, CNS toxicity is when you are breathing oxygen at a higher partial pressure of oxygen than one. Okay, which is what usually happens if you are underwater. Higher pressure means higher partial pressure of oxygen. There can be pulmonary and ocular toxicity that results from longer exposure to increased oxygen levels, but that's a different topic and I'm not talking about today. The central nervous system toxicity is the most common manifestation of oxygen toxicity. So what are the symptoms of CNS toxicity? Flashing lights in front of your eyes, tunnel vision, loud ringing in your ears like tinnitus, confusion, lethargy, uh, nausea, vertigo. There will also be maybe numbness or tingling. There might be muscular twitching, especially the lips. Some people say they feel like tingling in their lips themselves and eventually grand mal convulsion, a, grand, a seizure that can lead to drowning and death underwater. Now, Let's talk a little bit more about what is partial pressure, okay? So at sea level, the atmospheric pressure, the pressure that is exerted by the atmosphere on your body, on your fluids, on everything, including oxygen and gas, is one atmosphere. But if you are breathing regular air at 21%, uh, the partial pressure of oxygen is 0.21. Does that make sense? I'm going to give you another example. If you are breathing regular air that is made 79% of nitrogen, the partial pressure of nitrogen is 0.79. However, when you go underwater, because the pressure goes up, the partial pressure of each of the components of the gas that you are breathing also goes up. So let's start super easy, right? If you go down to 10 meters, the pressure is going to be two atmospheres. That means that your 0.21 partial pressure of oxygen at one atmosphere is now 0.42 partial pressure of oxygen because there are now two atmospheres and therefore 0.42 partial pressure of oxygen. That keeps going down the list. So if you go down to 30 meters, you are now subjected to four atmospheres of pressure. Okay, that means that your 0.21 is now quadruple to 0.84 partial pressure of oxygen. It, this goes on and on and on as you go deeper and deeper and deeper. For purposes of recreational diving, you'll see that 40 meters is usually your maximum for recreational diving. And there, your PPO2 of oxygen for regular air is 1.05. Now, why does that matter? It matters because at 1.6 partial pressure of oxygen or above, you are at very high risk for having a seizure caused by CNS toxicity. And this can happen even if you have a very short to medium exposure of that PPO2. This is why if you have taken a nitrox class, which is the introductory technical step usually recreational divers start taking when they're starting to get into more complicated uh, gas uses, nitrox will always immediately teach you that your PPO2 has to be at 1.4, no more. And you will say, well, hold on, you just said 1.6, why 1.4? Well, 1.4 is the operational PPO2. It's to keep people safe. Because if we tell everybody to go to 1.6, they're already in the danger zone, right? So 1.4 is the safety place. 1.6 is physiologically your maximum. It is also called your contingency level, which means that if something went wrong, that is as high as you possibly can go. Beyond that, you are truly in the danger zone. So how do you manage CNS exposure? Well, there is an expression, which is CNS percentage. 
And that is a measure of how long you have been exposed to an elevated partial pressure of oxygen as a percentage of the maximum allowable exposure. So the maximum allowable exposure is either one if you're using fractions or 100% if you're using percentages. And you will calculate how much percentage you have gone up to the 100%. And once you've read 100%, obviously that's dangerous and you need to stop diving or you need to stop exposing yourself to higher partial pressures of O2. So who gives us this information? There is a NOAA table and it was developed by the US Navy Experimental Dive Unit and this is what it looks like. So if you look at the dive table, you will see that it will give you a maximum partial pressure of O2 exposure, and that is this first column. And then it will tell you what your dive time in minutes is maximum at that particular exposure. And then it will also give you a handy dandy chart where you know if you have been exposed by, for a certain time at those partial pressures of oxygen, how much you have creeped up against your CNS percent maximum. So you take the total time of the dive and you divide it by the allowed exposure at that partial pressure and then you multiply your answer by 100 will give you your CNS oxygen exposure as a percentage. So if you are a recreational diver, you're saying, well, how does this affect me? You're correct. Not that much, but it's still a really interesting thing to know about. And if you choose to go into more technical aspects of diving, you're definitely going to want to know about this. So I'm going to show you what the partial pressure looks like. There's a shift, even if you're just using nitrox, a standard 32% blend of uh, nitrogen oxygen gas. So let's say that you are diving with a standard 32% nitrox, and just for a reminder, 32% nitrox means that you have 32% of oxygen and the rest is nitrogen. And you do that because it reduces your decompression risk. That's awesome. But it does increase your CNS toxicity. Look, life is all about balance. Okay, I don't make the rules. These are the laws of physics. Literally, I can't change that. So the partial pressure of O2 for a 32% blend, you will see at zero meters, one atmosphere is obviously 0.32. One atmosphere at 32% is 0.32 partial pressure, a fraction of oxygen. But then you're going to say, okay, well, at 10 meters, you're under two atmospheres. So you have to double it. And now you're at 0.64. At 20 meters, you're under three atmospheres and you end up at 0.96, so on and so forth. Now, interestingly, look at that. At 40 meters, you're under five atmospheres and you have reached the absolute maximum. In fact, you have reached the contingency maximum because the limit would actually exist somewhere between 30 and 40 meters, which is where you would have hit the 1.4 PPO2. Why does it matter? As I said, recreationally, rarely, because of all of the other factors. Your single tank won't last long enough for you to keep, to keep you at 30 or 40 meters long enough to hit CNS exposure. Why do I say that? If you look at the chart, if you are down there at even let's say 32% at 30 meters, which is a partial pressure of 1.28, which you're gonna round up to 1.3. Your maximum dive time is three hours. Look, if you can do a three hour dive on a single eight, aluminum 80 or even aluminum 100, um, interesting, we should study that. But most people just, that's just not something that happens, which is why it's not going to be an issue. And also you're not going to spend the whole three hours at that 1.3 because you're not going to spend all three hours at 30 meters. Okay. Now, when you use nitrox, it starts to become an issue because as you saw for 32%, you are going to hit it at 40. You're going to hit the contingency limit. So you're way past the operational limit of 1.4 by 30 meters. And if you have a 33, 34, 35, 36% nitrox, that limit is going to be reached even shallower. So it is something to keep in mind and to know about when you're doing your nitrox training. Now for technical divers, it's a big issue. PPO2 is life is what my instructor started our course when I did my rebreather training. PPO2 is life. Why? because I started diving a rebreather. And when you are diving a rebreather, you are artificially creating a higher PPO2 inside your breathing loop. In the case of rebreathers, you're usually running 1.2 or 1.3 PPO2. So immediately you are at that 1.3 limit. And there are two things that will happen. 
One, when you are diving a rebreather, you can dive, you can dive much deeper and you can dive much longer, which means it is entirely possible to hit that three hour limit. Certainly you can do it in one dive, but even if you don't do it in one dive, you will for sure end up doing it if you're diving multiple times on a rebreather in a day. Doing three one hour dives is not far fetched. So that's one thing to keep in mind, right? When you're diving rebreather and that's why it's relevant. The other thing is that when you are diving a rebreather, you are already running at 1.3 PPO2, which means that as soon as you go down, even just a little bit, that PPO2 is going to spike because the deeper you are, the higher the PPO2 because the higher the pressure. So if you are running at 1.3 and you, for example, get over a rock and go down maybe 10 meters, it is going to spike up, which is why there are contingencies and there are ways for you to reduce that PPO2. But certainly that is something that rebreather divers have to keep in mind all the time. PPO2 is life. So how do I reduce my CNS percent or my CNS exposure, my CNS value, however you want to call it? Okay, first, easy, surface interval. As soon as you are breathing oxygen at atmospheric pressure, you are back to 0.21, you are reducing the risk of CNS toxicity. And the rule of thumb is that for every 90 minutes of surface interval, you are going to half your CNS percent. So if you came out with a 50% CNS, then you were gonna hang out for 90 minutes, it'll be 25% once you go back into the water. You should always obviously watch your oxygen levels, calculate your maximum operating depth, calculate your PPO2, and always be aware of how to do that and what you are doing during the dive and what exposure you are taking on. And obviously for a rebreather, when you're underwater, we know this, but you should watch your PPO2 like a hawk. You should follow your computer. You should take breaks as recommended, both by the tables and by your computers. And overall, if you exceed your 24 hour exposure, then you should take a 24 hour break from diving to reset yourself and start back up. And that is CNS toxicity. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching this video. I'm Juji Carminati. Thank you for watching The Careful Diver.